One by one, Eric's bringing the paramedics and firefighters. They strap me to a board and they haul me out of the forest. I'm on a helicopter. And I'm in and out of consciousness. I remember I'm waking up and there's a doctor at the bottom of my bed. This is after surgery. I'm in the ICU. He's looking at this x-ray of my spine. I ask him how bad it is, and he says I'm lucky to be alive. I spent three months in rehab, and then for the next couple years back home, I worked as hard as I could to get my life back to normal. I wanted to be daddy again. I wanted to be independent. It was, it was going pretty well. You know, by the end of 2010, I was actually going back to work part-time. And to top off a pretty good year, I got to ride my motorcycle again. My buddies had taken my street bike and adapted it. We rented the racetrack, and then they stuffed me in my leathers and strapped me to the motorbike. Here I am going down the back street. That was awesome. You know, as great as everything was, I couldn't sustain the pace. Now, I'm one of the 50% of individuals with a spinal cord injury who suffer from neuropathic pain. Where the spinal cord is damaged, the wrong signals are getting into my brain and telling my brain that from my injury down, all of the skin is on fire. Now, I know that it's not, but, but that's what it feels like. After eight months, the worst, the worst eight months of my life, I had reached a new low. And trying to find some light out of this darkness, I thought, you know, I need to go back to the way it was before, where I was setting these goals and I was accomplishing them. Of all the things that I was trying, one thing that helped me the most was probably exercise. So as the three-year anniversary was coming around for my accident, I decided, you know what, I'm going to set some fitness-related goal. I had remembered the satisfaction I had from finishing that first half marathon. I wanted that again, but I wanted even more. So I thought, what's the craziest, most difficult, physical, challenging thing that I could think of? And I came up with this, the Iron Man. Out on the run, Around seven miles in, there's this hill called Polani Road. It's so steep that a lot of the able-bodied athletes have to walk up it. For us wheelchair athletes, we need to be really careful that we don't flip over backwards when we push. It's that steep. I was so grateful. My girls were there at the bottom of the hill to cheer me up it. The thing is, I couldn't look at them because I'd start to cry. Instead, I just focused straight ahead, and I grabbed the wheels, and for 15 minutes, I cranked 10 inches at a time. <laughs> Once I crested the hill, I got out on the highway again and started passing able-bodied athletes like crazy. I came into the finishing shoot. I had, I had passed like 350 of them to the loudest crowds I'd heard in my life. I tried to high-five as many people as I could while still moving. That's a challenge. And with the last ounce of energy I had, I climbed this ramp. The buggers put a ramp in at the finish line. <laughs> so I climbed this ramp, and I hear the announcer say, Robert Buren, you are an Iron Man. I did it. <laughs> this whole experience is so much bigger than me. You know, my kids have seen that no matter what kind of challenges you have, you can stretch yourself, you can work your ass off, and you can accomplish it. You know, my hope is that you can take some of that attitude with you today as you think what's possible for the rest of today and the rest of your lives. Thank you so much. <laughs>